everybody. Today I'm here to talk to you guys about regulators. So everybody's always asking me how these things work. They seem very mysterious, but they're actually really simple. And that's the reason they're so darn reliable. Um, so thought I'd just tell you guys a little bit about how a scuba regulator works. So it all starts with one of these scuba tank. Uh, a typical scuba tank has about 80 cubic feet or so of uh, air in it, just compressed air. And it's squished down to fit into this little tiny thing. And in order to do that, we have to get it to a pressure of uh, over 3,000 PSI. So I'd like to put that in perspective for you. So a car tire is filled to about 35 PSI. 35 pounds per square inch of pressure. And that's, you know, a pressure that I think all of us can get our head around, the pressure of a car tire. And you can pump one of these things up if you have to with a hand pump. So your typical shop compressor that, you know, you fill tires with or you run air tools with, they generally go up to maybe 150 PSI because they have a pretty, pretty thin metal tank. It can't take a pressure like a scuba tank. So, this scuba tank is basically filled to a pressure that's about a hundred times higher than the pressure in the tire of your car. So, they're actually classified as explosive devices. Now, Mythbusters found out that that scene in Jaws where they blow the scuba tank up to kill the shark is probably not really going to happen. But I will tell you that if you drop a scuba tank and it hits the valve on a rock or something and the valve breaks off, that valve will shoot away at a speed that is high enough to actually kill somebody. So these things are pretty dangerous. And for that reason, generally, we lie them down when we're not using them because they really can't fall over if they're already falling over. Now, the real question is, what does this have to do with scuba regulators? Well, the scuba regulator is a device that gets 3,000 PSI down to whatever pressure you happen to be at when you're in the water. So if you're on the surface, that's one atmosphere. If you're at 33 feet, it's two atmospheres. But the, the regulator has to feed the air to you at the same pressure all around. So you have a couple of things that happen to make that happen. A regulator, a modern regulator, has two stages. So there's the first stage. And what this does is it takes the pressure from the tank and drops it down to an intermediate pressure that's around 140 PSI. That's about the pressure in your shop compressor. And it'll keep that 140 PSI in this hose no matter what the tank pressure does as long as the tank pressure stays above 140 PSI. So whether the tank is full or nearly empty, you're always going to have the same pressure getting to the second stage. Now the second stage is the part that you breathe from, you know, yeah. And how this thing works is actually fascinating and incredibly simple. I'm gonna take it apart and show you. So I'm using kind of an older regulator just because they're really easy to get apart. I'm gonna unscrew the top of this thing and what's inside it is something called a diaphragm and it fits on top of the regulator and all this thing does is hold it on there and what you have inside it is basically a lever and all you do is push this lever and it opens a little valve that squirts the air from this hose into your mouth right through here it's literally just a button and the harder you push it the more air you get okay so, how does it work? This is the magic ingredient. So when you put the diaphragm on here, okay, it forms a seal because it's screwed down with that cap. And when you inhale, what happens is it pulls the diaphragm in. And I'm gonna turn the air off to demonstrate this so it doesn't make a racket. I drain the air out. And what you can see in how this works is when you push on this lever, it pulls out on this little seat. 
which lets the air in. Just a little simple valve. When you breathe in, the vacuum created by inhaling pulls this thing down. When it pulls this thing down from the vacuum, it literally just pushes on that lever. This little metal plate pushes on the lever. The lever has a little roller on it so that it rolls on the plate. It's kind of cool. Meep, meep. And that's literally it. That's how it works. The harder you inhale, the more vacuum you create, the more the diaphragm pushes down, and the more air goes into your mouth. Pretty much simple. Now, what happens when you exhale? This is an exhaust T. It's where your bubbles come out. And on these old regulators, the exhaust T is humongous. I, th I like to think of these like bell bottoms, you know, they're, they're, they're like from the 70s. But they make the bubbles go way out at the side of your face, like way out here. The new regulators, the exhaust T's are really small, makes the regulator more compact, but the bubbles go right up in front of your eyeballs. It's super annoying. So we take this thing off. <laughs> Trying not to have the screw go flying. Okay. And you take this thing off. You have a flapper valve, and it's a basically they call it a mushroom valve, and all it is is a piece of rubber that can flap open one way, but it can't flap shut. Like that's the flapper. Just a, it's just nothing but a little round piece of rubber against. Uh, like a cutout of some holes. So when you blow into this thing, it's kind of hard to illustrate. You can see the, the mushroom valve lets the air out, but when you try to inhale back, the mushroom valve can't go that way. It's a one-way valve. So when you inhale, it pulls in on the diaphragm and shoots air into your lungs. And when you exhale, it comes out the flapper valve. That's it. That's how a regulator works. Super easy. That's it. That's all I, that's all I got. Nice. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our latest episode all the way to the end. Hit that subscribe button now so you won't miss our next episode.